What's going on guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another video. First thing I want to say is thank you to all those who helped me reach 4k on this YouTube channel, all you who have liked, subscribed, all those who watch the video regularly, just want to say thank you because it's always appreciated. And now I did say I was going to do a QA and a to celebrate but because of Chelsea, because of my illness, I've caught a cold over the last couple of days, Lille away, Blues TV, Uni, I haven't had a lot of time to myself to even make this video. So I'm going to do it now, it's come a little bit late but most of the questions are still pretty relevant now so I can still answer them and I said I was gonna do it for you guys so I am gonna do it so let's without any further ado let's just go straight into this Q&A because it's gone on for long enough right first question First question comes from CFC Hash. By the way, shout out my boy Hashim. Like and subscribe to his channel as well. He says, Congrats, bro. Do you honestly think we'll get top four? Now, yeah. Now I think we can get top four. Start of the season, if you ask me, I would have said no. It's too much to ask for Frank Lampard. The loss of Eden has and the transfer ban. Just be focused on building the best out of this Chelsea side. But if you look at our rivals, Spurs are in crisis right now. Manchester United, they've been in crisis for years. And right now they look worse than they looked under David Moyes. And I didn't even know that was possible. And if you look at Arsenal, their defence is still shocking. All of our rivals still have holes. And to be honest, over the last couple of weeks, we've been better than them. It looks exactly like last season where we were flopping all over the place. But we were still doing better than our rivals because they just kept losing. And if the season goes any way than it's, go than it's gone right now course we can make top four right now we're i want to say firing on all cylinders but there's still a couple question marks around the side with the defensive shape with injuries and everything like that but give this team time if you look at the way our rivals are playing we can seriously capitalize on them this season if we make top four lampard's first season just wait for next season once he gets a transfer budget under his name right now do i think we can get top four why not in it why not all right, second question comes from at Njo I really hope I pronounced your name right. And he asks, what's your favorite Chelsea player in this current squad? Now, a lot of pundits are saying that this is the most likable Chelsea side they've seen in years. And as much as I hate that statement, it does carry a lot of weight here. There's a lot of Chelsea players to enjoy right now. You're talking about the youth, we've been waiting for them to be given a chance for years and we're seeing it now. And a lot of them are flourishing and taking their chances. But my favourite Chelsea player can't be one of the newer players from this season. It has to be N'Golo Kante. What he's brought to Chelsea ever since he joined us has been unmatched in midfield. The offensive stability, his tackling which speaks for himself, he's probably the best tackler in midfield in the world right now. His ability to drive the ball forward, his dribbling and his attacking prowess has only improved over the last two years, especially under Maurizio Sarri, where I think last season he got the most goals he's ever got in his career last season. And he's only continuing to build on it. You look at his goal against Southampton, you look at his brilliant strike against Liverpool as well. This is a player that's consistently improving and consistently raising his own standards every single year. So it has to be N'Golo Kante. Next question at Good Evening. Oh, that's an Arsenal fan. What time is Hudson Odoi coming round to clean Bakayo Saka's boots? After Saka comes round to clean Hudson Odoi's Europa League medal. Next. Next question from at Will Rayner, another Twitter account that you really need to follow if you don't do already. He says, Are you going to Amsterdam for Chelsea v Ajax? Of course I'm going to Amsterdam for Chelsea VIX. I booked that on the day as soon as we got the draw in the group stages. Check out the group stage draw live stream that we did on Blues TV. I was going crazy when we drew Amsterdam. Been there three times already. Place never gets sold to me. I'm not even going to talk about the things I enjoy there because I don't want this video to get demonetized. But let's just say it's going to be a good week when we go down there. If you guys want to see behind the scenes vlog every single day because I'm not just going to be there for the match. I'm going to make it a three or four day trip. If you guys want to see behind the scenes vlog let me know down in the comment section below but yeah of course i'm going to amsterdam next question comes from at attical 2017 again i'm sorry if i'm butchering all your names i'm really bad at pronunciation his question is your favorite european away day that you have been to so far now i've only been to about three european aways did atletico away we won 2-1 Barcelona away where Courtois got nutmeg twice and ruined the whole tie for all of us and Lille away just two weeks ago but let's be real if, you talk, if I even tell you those three games I think you can already tell which my favourite is going to be Atletico Madrid away my first ever European away went there with my boy Andrew we did the Thomas Cook trip rest in peace Thomas Cook 
and what a day it was I mean from the town square to getting into the ground check out the video check out the vlog from that game because I know I did a vlog on 100% Chelsea oh yeah check out the vlog if it's still there it's still a great video I'm always gonna shout it out because that's one of my best memories of going to games first ever European away and we won with the last kick of the game from Mishi Batshuayi I remember I had freshers flu going into that game as well. The whole second half I was holding on to my throat, I was walking down roads begging for water because I couldn't even speak or chant because my throat was that dry. And then Morata banged in the header and I'm losing my fucking head. And then Batshuayi scores and I'm losing my head some more. It's just Chelsea, isn't it? But yeah, at Let's Go Away, favourite European away by a mile. Alright, from at the Pat Jacobs, he says, advice to starting a YouTube channel. Is it better to start alone or to try and team up with another YouTuber? Now, if you team up with another YouTuber, you can learn from them. I'm sure they've got plenty of knowledge that they can teach you. You can use their name to build your own channel. Well, to promote your own channel as you guys build that other channel up together. But if you start alone, you are on your own and it's just you it's just you and whatever you make it's up to you of your consistency it's up to you how regularly you upload it's up to you what you even upload then there's positives and negatives to all of that it all just depends on the situation you're in it depends on what part of youtube you're trying to get into but if you ask me straight up which one is better start alone if you work with other youtubers there's a chance that will go well for you but there's a chance that they'll also try and take advantage of you take the piss now I wouldn't know much about that, but I'd just say it's better to start alone, innit? it? I'll just leave it at that. Next question from at GM underscore the fan chat. Hey, another one, another Twitter account that you lot need to follow. He says top three best and top three worst domestic away days. West Ham is bound to get mentioned or worse, I'm guessing. Yep, there you go. There's one already sorted. West Ham, the only London away that doesn't feel like a London away, except for Watford. Biggest shithole in London. I hate going to the London Stadium. You can barely see the ground. It's a long ass trip. They don't even let you through the Westfield Stratford because they don't want any football fans in there. The stewards are arseholes. Fuck the London Stadium. That goes to the top three worst. Are also in the top three worst because I need to put three in there. Crystal Palace and Everton. I like old grounds. I like the feel of older grounds. They're so cramped in there and with Palace and Everton They've got these big ass poles all around you. So nearly every sea is restricted view anyway The view is terrible. The concourse is cramped. West Ham, Crystal Palace, Everton all go into top three Top three best away days though. Southampton. Southampton definitely goes up there I like going to Southampton. Concourse is nice. The away stand is nice. The weather's usually nice when we go up there We also get the three points too Huddersfield I also really enjoyed because they had the loudest Premier League atmosphere I'd ever heard by a mile. Huddersfield fans, I will always speak you man up because you lot are great. Mm, and for a third one, who goes into a third? I actually don't know when it comes to a third one. Um, Fulham? Yeah. Yeah, let's go Fulham. Fulham's like down the road from where I live. It's a nice away day. We go there, we get the three points. Fulham fans hate us for 90 minutes, but they can't do anything. It's the same whenever we face any other West London side. So yeah, Fulham, Southampton and Huddersfield. Those are my best three aways. Right, last question comes from at Sadiq CFC10 and he says, What really happened between you and Louis? Thought you two were really close friends. So did I, but you can't work in YouTube with those that you can't trust, I've got to be honest. Now, I'm, I'm not going to go into too much depth about it because I haven't got the battery life for it, it's way too long. But let's just say me and Lawrence did an advert for the FA Cup final, we were both meant to get paid for it. Money didn't come our way and I heard on very good authority that the money did come in, we just didn't see it. Now. Let's just say there's been history in this happening before, so I kind of had an idea where the money really went. Louis put out a big statement on Twitter a couple days ago saying money needs to be reinvested about eight months ago. Eight months ago it really didn't because no new equipment or nothing ever came into the channel. Eight months ago, I think that was back in January, all, all that we really found out was who really owned 100% Chelsea. Now. I'm not going into any depth about that because that's just going to put me in a lot of trouble with other people and shit. I'm going to leave that door closed. All I'm just going to say is you can't work with people you can't trust. Now there's been history of that happening to other people before. I think it happened to Sammy a couple years ago as well. Not so sure about that. you got to leave that to him. That's another door I'm closing because 
that's not my thing to talk about that's his own leave that to him all i'm gonna say with me is you can't work with those that you can't trust and last year was just too full of drama too full of lies too full of everything like that and to be honest he kind of told me he was leaving as well which is why i didn't understand why he froze me out after i told him i was leaving channels even though he knew from my birthday back in april but it's fine i mean i'm on blues tv i'm enjoying myself i'm i'm too busy for drama or anything like that anyway i'm too busy trying to focus on chelsea i've got my last year at uni i can't be bothered for any drama i just want what's best for me and what's best for me right now is blues tv i'm grateful to 100 percent chelsea for the last two and a half years i enjoyed it it was the most fun i'd ever had I met so many new people and i'd love to enjoy myself i learned to come out i learned to be a bit more confident that channel gave me all of that but again you can't work with those that you can't trust and after two and a half years of working for free and breaking my back for that channel doing everything from editing fan cams to titling fan cams to editing my own vlog to doing my own vlog to working as a cameraman to doing probably all those jobs at once on certain match days I kind of thought I deserved better and to be honest Blues TV is giving me that Blues TV has been the last few months has been like a breath of fresh air to me it's been enjoyable it's been everything that I kind of hoped 100% Chelsea would be but my vision never came to pass again I'm grateful to 100% Chelsea I'm grateful to the owners of that channel for everything that they've given me but again you just can't work with those that you can't trust but guys this is the end of my Q&A. Let me know if you guys enjoyed this. I need to rush this outro because my battery's gonna die. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Carefree Lewis G. Don't forget to let me know down in the comment section below if you guys wanna see that behind the scenes vlog in Amsterdam. Hope you guys enjoyed the Q&A. Let's smash 300 likes on this video and I'll see you guys soon. Up the Chels.